Alrighty, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. As you can tell, it looks a little bit different. I'm actually back in Massachusetts. I am going to be moving here actually in a month. So I am here kind of getting some stuff set up. I'm going to have an office and stuff like that. So that's exciting. I'm also here for my birthday. Turn in 32. We're getting older. Um, so I'm excited about that. But so that's why things look a little bit different. And if the quality is not as high, that's why. Um, but today we are going to be talking about Jay Bay, who is actually someone we've talked about a, a few times here on the channel. Um, her most popular thing that kind of was like her claim to fame was when she started talking about plus size travel and how, you know, people that are plus size deserve XYZ thing. Uh, we've made a few videos on her. Did you know that more than 1 billion people in the world are plus size? That's roughly 13% of the population. And yet many airlines still don't have clear policies in place to accommodate plus size passengers. That's why I've started a petition calling on the FAA to require every airline to have a clear customer size policy in place for plus size passengers. No one should have to endure the discomfort, embarrassment, and discrimination that often comes with being a plus size passenger trying to navigate air travel. It doesn't seem like she, this is a, a terrible person and I like hate them or anything like that. That's, that's definitely not how I feel. But at the same time, it definitely feels like it is a person that is coming from a very privileged uh, position and a very uh, narrow point of view and only looking at things of how, uh, on how it affects them and how that f doesn't feel fair to them. In guest rooms, lobbies, and common areas to accommodate different body sizes and types. Number two on the list, ensure beds with strong support and a higher weight capacity along with providing reinforced chairs and wider bathroom facilities. Number three, make elevators and hallways spacious. To allow so that I'm just like, okay, I don't know if she means like get rid of stuff that might be inside of elevators and hallways, but like, come on, you know, like if you're talking about widening or making an elevator bigger, it's not as simple as just make the elevator bigger. Like elevators are the size that they, I, I, this is one that I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like that's clearly not possible. Like that you can't just widen a hallway. Like, again, if you're talking about maybe getting rid of some stuff that might be in the hallway that would make it hard for someone, I think that that would make sense, especially if there are, like, rooms that are made to be inclusive. If, like, the the walkway to that room is made to be spacious enough for someone, I understand that. But, like, widening a hallway and making elevators bigger, I just – you don't – you can't just do that. This isn't Sims, you know. That's going to be millions and millions of dollars to do that. At the time she let me reach the wheelchair and sit down my lips were white. My oxygen levels had dropped and I almost fainted. I think the, the craziest thing to me is that to, to be in that position where just walking down a jet bridge, which it might be the longest one you've ever seen, but none of those are insanely long, is causing you to a point where your lips are turning white and you can barely breathe. I don't understand how you don't see that happening to you and think to yourself, I really need to make a change because this is a life that I don't want to live. Newsflash, weight isn't just about eating habits, genetics, metabolism, mental health, and money play big roles. Blaming it all on overeating, that's ignorant. Yeah, I think that there's, this is where I get so, I get frustrated because it feels like, because those are things that play a role into it, but. I'm sorry, but like no one, when you get to the size that JB is, especially when you, you have lost so much of your freedom and your mobility to not at all think that there is any part, any part of it is your doing things that you are choosing to do. And it's everything else. Like, yes, all of those things I believe play a role into it. But all of those things are not making someone to a point where they cannot walk around a grocery store and go shopping, right? Every single Uber driver should get a seatbelt extender and then be reimbursed by Uber. That's her solution. Like that just isn't realistic. Like that's just not going to happen, right? When the much easier option is for you, if you like have one, she claims she has one seatbelt extender that a lot of times doesn't work. Okay. Maybe you need to get multiple. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. It's like, because again, her whole thing is plus size travel. You see it here, right? Plus size travel. That's her whole shtick. That's the whole thing that she posts about. If that is such a big thing for you, I think it makes sense for you to be well equipped and ready for these situations that are going to arise. And I know her answer would be, well, it's not fair. I shouldn't have to do that. Right. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, you kind of do like you have put yourself in a position where you need extraordinary services to get around. And, um, through time, it seems that 
things have kind of changed and her content has definitely shifted from that focus. And, and so I just kind of wanted to go over that and just kind of check in and see where J Bay is right now. So one of the first things I noticed when I went to her Instagram page is that pretty much all of the comments are limited. So you can't really leave a comment or a lot of the posts don't even have comments at all. I don't know if the comments are just turned off. It looks like they are because they don't have the little comment thing that would be down here. Um, but the first post that I want to talk about is this one um, where she's talking about this thing called Project Heal, which in and of itself, I think isn't a bad thing. I think this, this project from what I've seen from it, the little bit of research I've done looks like a pretty positive thing. Um, but the caption goes on to say, I've struggled with EDs, we can't really say the words because we get demonetized immediately if we use those words, for years and now it's time to break down the barriers and keep so many from accessing the help they need. EDs affect people of all sizes, shapes, and backgrounds. No one should be left behind in their journey to heal. This Heal Week 2024, let's lock arms and lean in to support Project Heal in their mission to provide life-saving care for those who need it um, most. Every dollar you donate this week will be matched three times, tripling your impact, right? So it's it's something where she's talking about this, this company that works with people that have EDs. Um, and so I think it's interesting because, you know, for the longest time, I just find that the the dichotomy of people that are really into the health at every size plus size community and are like, you know, there's nothing wrong with being bigger are also a lot of times people saying that I have this disordered way of putting food into my mouth. Sorry, I, I really can't use the words. And th that's the reason that I'm this size. So it's like, if, if the way that you eat is causing you all of this pain and it's something that you want to change, shouldn't like it not be something that we're promoting so much. I don't know, it's interesting, but let, let's get let's get into the actual video here. I've with disordered eating since I was very young, but in high school, it took a real toll on me. As someone who's always lived in a larger body, seeking help was really hard. I didn't look like what society imagines when they think disordered eating. The financial barriers I faced growing up, including homelessness, made treatment impossible to access. But over time, seeing people of all body types openly discuss their struggles with disordered eating led me to eventually realize that healing is possible for everybody. Disordered eating doesn't discriminate. It affects people of all sizes, shapes, and backgrounds. And that's why Project Heal is so important. Project Heal is actively breaking down the barriers that keep people from getting the help they need with disordered eating. But they can't do it alone. They rely on donations to keep their life-saving work going. Will you help us make sure that nobody's left behind on their journey to heal? Every dollar that you donate to Project Heal this week will be tripled to support those in need. This Heal Week, please consider donating to Project Heal. The link is in my bio. The reason that I think it's so interesting is because it's there's so much talk about, like, you shouldn't be ashamed of your body and, like, you know, you being in a bigger body isn't a bad thing and there's nothing wrong with it. But then at the same breath, we're talking about this way of eating that is leading you there, which is something you want to change, right? And it's like something that you see as a negative. And I'm assuming that way of eating is the thing that is leading you into being in the size of body that you are in, right? And so that is seen as a negative. But then at the same time, it's like, but also it's not bad to be in this size of body. And anyone that's that talks about any of the negatives that might be attached to being in a, a body that large are terrible people. And like, you should never think that way. I think that there two things can exist at the same time and you can work on yourself and see like hey this body that i'm in the size that i am is is le you know leading me to a lot of pain discomfort and it's it's making the quality of life that i have a lot lower than it needs to be while also not saying i'm also disgusting and and like i hate myself because of that right i think that you can work on that relationship with your body and the fact like and see that hey that the size that i'm in that that i am is a negative and i need to improve it but at the same time i don't hate myself and i'm not going to you know do do things that are incredibly negative as far as like trying to lose the weight for myself there's a way that you can lose the weight in a healthy way that really proves a lot of self-love and i think part of that the thing that's interesting is exactly what jay bay is talking about here with getting help for whatever eating issues you might have. And so it's it's so interesting because it's like it's like she's taking the first step in what I think would be a journey to improve the quality of her life by really seeing the size that you are and like trying to mitigate those things. But then it, it's almost always like like there's like one foot in the pool and there's another foot that's you know kind of out of the pool because it's like you don't want to fully dive in and i just think that that's such an interesting dichotomy there. So now jumping into her TikTok, now this 
the the TikTok page is very different, and it seems like the, the gears have shifted quite a bit into not really talking. It's it's funny because if you look at the you know the the bio, empowering plus size uh, travelers, but the past few posts have had no, nothing to do with that. They've been quite different. Um, so if we go to this post right here, um, it goes on to say, so yeah, I've got a fiance and an amazing boyfriend who just so happens to be in prison until next year and someone else who's also stolen my heart. Being poly means I get to love all these incredible people, um, incredible people who um, who make life a wild ride. Corbin said something today that really hit me in the feels, and I honestly never thought I'd fall for someone like him, but here I am, and I wouldn't change a thing. So again, this is like the content is so drastically different now, and it does it definitely does seem like there is a, a little bit of a shift going on, right? I just want to talk about my boyfriend, Corbin, for a minute. Um, he is so sweet, and I can't wait for you guys to get to know him. Um, I will be so honest though, he is in prison. Uh, he'll be out next year and we have been- I would love to know why. That would be very interesting. Dating for a month now. Um, it's been so cool getting to know him and I love that like we relate to a lot of things. Like we grew up very similarly. We've been through a lot of crazy shit, both of us. And we just get each other on that level, right? And like, he is just the sweetest, kindest person. Like he makes me smile. He is so f funny. And I would have never gone for someone like him um, just by like his looks and everything. And like, I just- I wonder what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> I'm so happy. Like he makes me really happy. And I know that I told you I'd give you an update on my boyfriend. So that's a little bit about him. Um, he's so intelligent and kind and funny and hot. And just like, I don't know, he's like a total catch, so. So that's the, the, the post about her being in, you know, these multiple relationships. And if, you know, if that's your thing, that's fine. But again, it's just very interesting that this, this content has shifted so much into being like, from being like plus size travel, you know, trying to help people to now it, it seems like it's, it's almost like getting into just like daily life kind of category. It's very different than it used to be, right? And here's another post where she's um, talking about basically a v the very similar stuff, right? So just keeping with you all, I'm polyamorous and navigating multiple relationships, including a fiance and a boyfriend, which has a been a huge adjustment. Balancing time and attention with people who all deserve the best version of me is a, ch challenge, is a challenge I'm learning to navigate. The biggest tip I've learned so far, prioritize your partners by being intentional with your time, setting aside moments for each relationship to grow while staying present uh, within each one is key. It's not easy, uh, but it's all about learning and growing together. I'll be documenting this journey. So if you want to hear more about how I'm balancing it all, hit the follow button. So again, it seems like this is where the content is going, right? This type of content, right? Yo, I got to be so honest with you. I'm polyamorous, I have a fiance, and I'm dating. I'm dating other people, I have a boyfriend as well, and something that I'm struggling to like deal with, and that's been an adjustment for sure, is balancing. Balancing multiple relationships with different people who are so very different has just been a challenge, and I'm trying my best to figure out like my groove and to make sure that I prioritize my current partner, but also make sure I set aside time for those new relationships to develop and build. Um, that's the one thing I've learned so far that I can do to like try and balance it a little bit better. It's, it seems like it's like the, the first thing I think of, and maybe it's because I'm not polyamorous and that's not something that interests me, but it's like, it feels like it's like someone trying to be very relatable, but I mean, I, I don't know how many people are going to be able to relate to this type of content. And I don't know how, how this is going to be something that is sustainable right like to create content about this like how many people are actually interested it's not that you know this was uploaded a day ago and it has zero comments i don't know if the comments are again like restricted but and it has 24 likes like there's not that many people that it seems that are seeking this content out right better but i think just overall trying to like figure out what it's like to have partners that want your attention and deserve your attention and deserve you um and the whole you is like so difficult and i want to document like what i learned throughout this process so if you want more content like that make sure you hit that follow button so it doesn't seem like it is all this type of content because we go here if we look at these photos right like this was uploaded well this was uploaded a few months ago right but it's still she's still posting like the you know but body positive kind of like herself in the um 
in her bathing suit and stuff like that. So that's still, there's definitely still there. But again, it's, it's just so interesting. Zero comments. I don't, it says the comments are turned off. So it's just so interesting to post this and then not want any sort of feedback or anyone to say anything at all. Um, and then this last post, we can't play the audio because it's, there's a song, um, but it goes on to say, it says, you think you know the story. And uh, I think that's all it says in the, in the video. And um, it says, you think you know the story, question mark. And I think, think again, right? Next week, every secret gets exposed. I'm not holding back. And then she goes on to say, me and my truth. We sit in silence until it's time to speak. But next week, oh, next week, the tea is going to be hot. And I'm not holding back. Y'all better come prepared. Talk your stuff if you want to. For anyone who thought they could mess with me and keep it quiet, brace your so so yourselves. This is my story, my side, and there's no sugarcoating it. Let's see who's ready for the truth. Hashtag stay tuned. So that's just a little bit of an update on J-Bay. I think it's interesting. It seems like a lot of people that were bigger in the body positivity space seem to be shifting gears. We've been talking about that quite a bit um, in a lot of the videos. It's something that I'm noticing, and it seems like that's what's happening. I could be wrong, but from a lot of the posts and it just seems like there's not like, turning off all the comments, really restricting conversation. It's it's a very interesting way to go about it. And then obviously talking about the relationship again, if that's something that you're into, that's fine. That's not what I'm trying to judge here. More more than anything, it's it's the shift from what the content was to what it is now. And I'm always just interested as someone that's been creating content for a long time, there's usually a reason why someone does that. Um, and a lot of times it can be financially motivated, just feeling like, you know, the videos aren't picking up or the, the content people aren't engaging with it anymore. And it seems like that's something that's happening quite a bit with a lot of people that are in the body positivity space. So I just wanted to share that and just kind of ask y'all what y'all thought about that and, and you know, what your, you know, your theories might be. Um, uh, but with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the video and I'll see you next time. Peace.